Just a reminder, guys, today's high-value man can easily become tomorrow's old simp. Coming to paperback and e-readers, John Haynes, Illuminati. The man who rules the world takes on the head of the global elite in this action-packed, all-new John Haynes series adventure. Pre-order your copy of John Haynes, Illuminati on Amazon.com and online booksellers everywhere. Better get the cold slow, y'all, cause we're having us a barbecue. <laughs> Hugh Hefner's widow, Crystal Hefner, has released a tell-all book telling all of the things that went on behind the scenes at the Playboy Mansion and all of the things that went on behind the scenes with her marriage. Crystal Hefner is speaking out for the first time about life inside the Playboy Mansion and her marriage to controversial Playboy founder, Hugh Hefner. Crystal Hefner spent nearly a decade living at the mansion and moved out after her husband's death in 2017. But in her new book, she writes she lost her identity because of this relationship. The book is called Only Say Good Things, Surviving Playboy and Finding Myself. And Hefner writes, quote, the number one rule of Hef's world is you didn't say anything bad about Hef. Life was a classic Hollywood romance, and life was good. Playboy did not respond to multiple requests for comment, and Crystal Hefner joins us now, first on CBS Mornings. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations on the book. Thank you. So, Crystal, despite living at the mansion for nearly a decade, you say that it never felt like home. You write about having nightly curfews. You write about the power dynamics and conforming to specific body standards through plastic surgery. Um, you've said in other interviews that you look back on that time with regret and disgust. Break down that characterization for me. Um, being at the mansion was very hard. It was very traumatic looking back. And as I go through therapy after I left, um, your value was skin deep. So you had to make sure that you looked perfect at all times, or at least perfect to what, you know, have standards were. And so when you say that you were brainwashed, that you felt like you were brainwashed when you look back at that time, people will say, did you really not know what you were getting into by even being at a party at the Playboy Mansion? Yeah, I think this was a time like pre Me Too and when Playboy was kind of more at its prime and it's something that girls aspired to be part of and you know, I, was, I was a part of that. I, I was 21, you know, I was an adult, but, but looking back now as a 37 year old, I'm like, I was, I was young and impressionable for sure. Yeah, you, you knew what you were doing. It's, it's interesting because I find myself with this book fascinated and repulsed at the same time. Because here you go, that first night, it's lights, camera, action, and all that we know about the Playboy Mansion, it was exciting, it was fun, you know, it was really sex, drugs, and rock and roll. So you go there, and that very first night, Hugh picks you out of the crowd, doesn't he? Can you move your hair? Your hair is gorgeous, but it's hitting your microphone. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you can move it back. So he picks you out that very first night that you're there. Yeah, very first night, and I felt like the, the chosen one. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, you felt like the chosen one, that he chose me. Yeah. And then once you're there, you said there, you really can't even trust any of the girls because you said, I think your words, we would shank each other. Everybody was sort of vying for his affections. Yeah, yeah, everyone was against each other and it was very hard. Female friendship was very hard there. I like to, you said, Hefner was a, the poster boy for sexual liberation, but you never felt liberated in the bedroom. Mm. It was always framed as a choice, an invisible trap framed by the language of choice. Could you elaborate on what you mean by that? Yeah, I think, I think that's very strong. I think Playboy itself, when Hef started the brand, I think he wanted it to be all about freedom and expression. And when I was at the mansion, I feel I completely lost myself to what was expected of me. So there was, there was nothing free about it. I felt trapped. But, but yet you get married in 2012. Yes. This is the thing that got to me. Because you are 26 and he is 86. Yes. So what were you thinking at that time? Because you, you can't call this love, could you? No. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was, was love. I did care for him. Yeah. He, I, he was getting older, and I know he wanted to protect his image and just be the man that he was to the public. And, and you also said you thought he needed you. Yeah. I felt sorry for him, in a way, and felt, felt that he really needed me, because 
at a certain point, like, I didn't need him for anything. I was good on my own. I had money. I had all these things. And but I remember telling my mom, I'm like, he needs me. Mm -hmm. So I stayed. Mm -hmm. you, you write that it was a job, that you didn't really love him, that he didn't have any of the qualities that you imagined that you would find in a man when you dreamed about potentially getting married. What, was, what did the job entail? The job entailed <laughs> completely losing myself to someone else. And I didn't fully realize that until later. So I just made myself Hef's mirror. And mm -hmm. that was my job. But as you sit here today, 36, 37? 37. 37, 37. Still very young, very young. Yes, <laughs> as you sit like here to today, what is your life like today? And what do you want people to know about the woman that you are today? Life is good now. I finally have freedom. Do you I have love in your life? I do. I have recent love in my I'm life. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Thank mm -hmm. you. It feels very healthy. And, and I'm happy. And I'm, I'm finally finding myself who I am and what I enjoy. I yeah, feel and, better. Yeah. Okay, but I do want to read this on, about Hef's death because I think it sort of sums it up from GLAD. Hefner was not a visionary. He was a misogynist who built an empire on sexualizing women and mainstreaming stereotypes that caused irreparable damage to women's rights and our entire culture. I don't think this could thrive today. When you hear that about him, do you think that's accurate? I think it's accurate. I think the mansion could never happen today. It was almost like it was some type of social experiment. Um, yeah, it can never be repeated, for sure. Thank you for being here, Crystal. Thank I'm you. glad you have love in your life. Yes. And that you're feeling you really better about your life these days. Thank you. I'm very glad to hear that. Only Say Good Things is available today. Now, in her book, Only Say Good Things, Crystal Hefner starts to put distance between herself and her late husband, Hugh Hefner. Now, Crystal Hefner is now saying that life behind the scenes of the Playboy Mansion wasn't as glamorous as she thought it was when she submitted her picture to Playboy and then got invited over to the Playboy Mansion. Now, after Crystal Hefner was invited to the Playboy Mansion, she thought that she was going to enter a world that would basically take her on a road to the entertainment industry. However, she found herself in an environment where she had to compete for the attention of the 80-something-year-old Hugh Hefner. And what happened with Crystal Hefner basically was that she got a shock to her system because in her town, she was one of the more attractive women. And when she came to the Playboy Mansion, she actually had to deal with a lot of other attractive women and had to compete for the attention of those women who were basically caught up in their hypergamy because what these women wanted to do was be able to get in, involved with a man who had high status and had a lot of resources. And that's why those women were so competitive and catty because they wanted to be the one who would be the lead woman in Hugh Hefner's whole social circle. And Hugh Hefner basically knew this because he was basically looking for somebody to replace his previous number one woman in 2008 when Crystal Hefner came to the mansion. And he basically wound up choosing Crystal Hefner at the time to be his new number one woman and put her in Playboy magazine in 2009 and then after put, having her pose in Playboy eventually decided to make her his wife. Now Crystal Hefner now wants to say that the relationship between her and Hugh was one that was dysfunctional but that could, is something that she could have easily figured out if she was thinking critically because going to the Playboy Mansion is not something a woman who is in her right mind really wants to do. However, it's something that many poor or desperate women for attention want to do and they do this because they think that by getting into Playboy they will be able to elevate their social status. Moreover, they think that they will be in the presence of a man who will be looking to share his vast resources with them and allow them to be in a high social position in American society. However, the position that Crystal Hefner got when she became Hugh Hefner's wife, she soon found out it was an artificial position as related to being elevated to a high social status 
and she found out that she was being elevated to an artificial position because the whole thing with Hugh Hefner's Playboy Enterprises was that it was a struggling business and it was a struggling business back then because the internet made it where adult images were basically accessible for free with a Google search and people did not have incentive to go out and buy Playboy magazine or see these see the playmates as somebody who they could go out here and lust after and Crystal Hefner's whole aspirations for fame through Playboy basically wound up falling apart like they do for every other playmate and had Crystal Hefner really just read the playmate sheets that are in every issue of Playboy magazine she would have found out that being the wife of Hugh Hefner wasn't going to elevate her social status or be able to allow her to use it as a springboard to go on a road to Hollywood. No, what happens with most of these women who go to Playboy, they don't understand that Playboy is a part of adult entertainment and adult entertainment has absolutely nothing to do with Hollywood. No, in Hollywood you have to get an agent to represent you if you want to get work in Hollywood and having Playboy on your resume doesn't really open doors with Hollywood because Hollywood wants to sell their movies and their TV shows and commercials to an audience of women and most women basically frown on any woman who's featured in Playboy because they basically see that woman as a 304. And because they see that woman as a 304, it makes it where they wind up losing the large female audience of customers, and it makes it where those women don't want to aspire to be like that woman or have any interest in being in the presence of that woman because that woman represents competition. And that's what Crystal Hefner never was really told about trying to send pictures to Playboy and how it basically derails a career before it even starts because if you send pictures to Playboy and pose in Playboy you're not going to be able to go to Hollywood because agents won't be able to book you in jobs because the studio won't be able to sell you as a face that other women aspire to be like. So Crystal Hefner basically thought, oh, I'll go to Playboy and pose in Playboy and get with Hugh Hefner and found out that her aspirations for the, being in the entertainment industry got derailed and she was basically stuck on the Playboy mansion with Hugh Hefner and as she was stuck in that mansion with Hugh Hefner, she was basically stuck in a place that had basically was deteriorating around her because she said a lot of the animals there were not really cared for but they couldn't really be cared for because nobody really cared about Hugh he about these animals all they cared about was stroking Hugh Hefner's ego just like she was and what they were looking to do was create a covert contract in order to make his world smooth so that they could go out here and get money out of him and as they got money out of him, what they would do is just be at his mansion at his beck and call. Now, Crystal Hefner wants to complain, oh, Hugh Hefner insisted that she get breast implants and all the women be a certain height and weight, but that was the requirement as related to sending pictures to Playboy. So she, this is the deal she basically agreed to. And she agreed to this deal and everything was fine until she wound up getting stranded at the Playboy Mansion and could not really leave the Playboy Mansion because outside of the Playboy Mansion she possibly had no education or skills and could not really get another job that would allow her to live this lavish lifestyle or have this status. So she's sitting here complaining, oh, they made me get breast implants, they made me have a certain weight. Well, this is what you agreed to when you decided to become a Playboy Playmate, and it's also what she agreed to when she decided to go to the Playboy Mansion to live with Hugh Hefner before he wound up marrying her. Now, Crystal Hefner also goes on to say 
oh, that Hugh Hefner would participate in multiple sexual acts to the point where he allegedly took Viagra's until he was deaf and also wanted to use baby oil as lube and also had multiple sexual partners. These are the claims she makes about her marriage to Hugh Hefner as related to their sex life. And this, again, is what she agreed to get involved with because most people already knew that Hugh Hefner basically was a whoremonger male and they knew that this was the lifestyle that he was living at the Playboy Mansion. People have known this for years, but she was looking for sympathy, but there's not much sympathy to be had because she basically signed on for this deal and if she saw what this was the deal at the mansion, then she could have easily walked out of the door as related to that deal because usually they pay the playmates a, a good deal of money to be a playmate and the playmate of the year gets a good six to seven figures. So she could have easily walked away from the mansion, but she stayed at the mansion and she claims that she stayed because she basically wasn't in love with Hugh Hefner. No, she basically said that she had pity for Hugh Hefner and felt sorry for him. And when she said that she felt sorry for him, basically what she was telling me was that she basically had no real respect or regard for him at all as a man. And what she was looking to do was get access to those resources, hope to get him to get her in Playboy, get her star elevated, and after she got her star elevated, she thought she was going to go on to a, that career. But that was, again, never going to happen. And I'll repeat that it's never going to happen because in the case of all the Playmates that I read when I was reading Playboy magazine in the 90s, most of them were saying, oh, I'm going to go to Hollywood and be a big star. But as I look at the, at the background of all those women, none of those women went on to become anything at all outside of Jenny McCarthy. And she's really, she's just came up on television and never really went that far that as well as, as related to becoming an A-list star. So many of these playmates, they, again, they're a dime a dozen. And that's what happened to Crystal Hefner. And now she's trying to rewrite the story in order to make herself out to be this victim as related to Hugh Hefner allegedly exploiting her and taking advantage of her. But I don't really see how Hugh Hefner exploited her or took advantage of her when she was the one who made the initial contact. No, when you go out here and send the pictures to Playboy, that's you sending the pictures to get that attention for yourself. And what's happening here with Crystal Hefner is she's trying to say, oh, Hugh Hefner is the bad guy now that he's been dead for several years and can't speak for himself. And what we have here with Crystal Hefner is a textbook case of female nature because what Crystal Hefner is doing right now, now that Hugh Hefner is dead, the inheritance has been given to her as related to a home and a couple of million dollars is what she's looking to do is try to revise the story to make herself out to be a victim and as she revises the story to make herself out to be a victim and rewrite the entire story what she's hoping to do is reinvent herself and reinvent herself where she can be the innocent woman and what's happening here is what she wants to do is make herself the innocent woman to make herself appear to be more attractive to a new suitor. And that's what Crystal Hefner is doing right now by writing this tell-all book, getting rid of the Hefner last name because that name no longer has any more status to her. No, it's more of a stigma right now. And it's a stigma because being the wife of Hugh Hefner is not going to allow her to enter female social circles and be seen in a positive light. Moreover, it's not going to allow her to enter into male social circles and be seen in a positive light because all people are going to think about is all the sexual encounters that she had with this old simp in order to get at his attention and access to his resources and basically show that she is someone who has been ran through by 
Hugh Hefner, and also been somebody who has already been previously married. So what she wants to do is get or strip away all of the things related to her previous times with the Playboy Mansion and, and her marriage to Hugh Hefner and try to start out brand new as this real estate agent and make it look like she's a completely different woman. This is what a lot of promiscuous women love to do and what they want to do is participate in playing the role of the female chameleon like Sandman has talked about in his earlier videos and what she wants to do now is change her colors in order to adapt to a new pool of men at 37 years old in the hopes of finding a brand new man. Now, in a report, she says that she has a new boyfriend, but this new guy I don't think is going to last very long because when she made this tell-all book, this is all part of her hypergamous plan. What she wants to do is monkey branch to a higher status man by reinventing herself into someone who would appear to be more attractive and more of a more reflect positive reflection on another man. Because a woman is a reflection of a man, and the whole thing is the wife of a person who participated in pornography isn't going to be a good reflection on a guy. No, she's not going to be a good reflection on that man, because most of those guys are going to really look at any guy who gets involved with her as kind of weak because here you are getting involved with a woman who was involved with Hugh Hefner, a guy who basically was out here running through women at the Playboy Mansion, having his wife participate in threesomes and foursomes and all sorts of sexual deviancy. And that's not going to reflect positively on a man as related to his girlfriend or possibly his wife. So this is why Crystal Hefner is looking to revise the story and make herself into a victim to make herself viable for other men as related to possible relationships and marriage. And what she wants to do is reinvent herself and, re and repackage herself in a way that would make her appear to be viable as a partner who would reflect positively on a man. However, smart men can look past these whole narratives that Crystal Hefner is participating in and understand the female nature that's going on and understand that this female chameleon is basically looking to change colors to make herself into a marketable partner to a man, but most smart men will see through that whole disguise and as they see through that disguise, they can see that Crystal Hefner isn't wife material. No, they're going to leave her at the Playboy Mansion in the bus in the section of Bus Downtown, where she's going to be in the 50, 60, 70, even 80% off the original social marketplace price value. Because a woman who has gotten involved with an old simp basically is somebody who is out here again. A gold digger in disguise and most guys are gonna see through that disguise because they know that she the only reason why she was with Hugh Hefner was for the money and she basically the way she treated him is the way they're gonna get treated in a relationship and while she says in her book only say good things she's saying bad things about Hugh Hefner that what and the way she treated the previous her previous late husband is the way they will be treated that's what any critical thinking man would understand about Crystal Hefner. And as they understand this whole point, they understand that getting involved with this woman would lead to them being treated in the same way that she's treating Hugh Hefner's legacy right now is the way that she is, would treat their legacy and possibly their children. This woman basically is one that she do is a female predator looking for another guy to prey on. And while she talks about pitying Hugh Hefner, she shows no respect for his memory, no respect for his legacy, no respect for who he is as a man. Because a wife who truly loves her husband isn't going to put his business in the street like this to embarrass him or his legacy. No, if she goes out and gets involved with that man, she's going to protect that man's memory and his legacy and honor him 
even though he participates in dishonorable actions, she understands that her, her, eye, her thing is to protect his memory and his legacy and protect it in a way where if others put business in the street, that's on them, but she's not going to say a word. But Crystal Hefner, again, had no honor. And again, what she's doing to him is basically what she will do to any guy who gets involved with her. And this is what happens when you get involved with female predators. And this is the final fate of a high-value man. Now, Hugh Hefner was a one of the highest high-value men. And sadly, what happened to Hugh Hefner is what happens to high-value men who don't know how to get out of the game. No, a high-value man who's smart will go out here and get married and have his family and stay with his wife and cleave to his wife as the Bible has stated that he needs to do and cleave to his wife because that protects his legacy and protects his reputation. Unfortunately, Hugh Hefner, being a whoremonger male, could not get enough of these younger women and he went from the road to being a high-value man to winding up becoming an old simp. And what happens to high-value men who stay too long in the game, what happens is they become old simps. They start looking to think that they can use their money as leverage to get the attention of women. But what happens is these women don't have respect for those men. And because those women don't have respect for those men, they basically use those men to get their money. And then as they, after they get their money, what they do is they'll participate in some sex where they're just doing it out of obligation. And after they participate with the sex that they have with that man out of obligation, what they do is go find another side dude and get their back blown out by that dude. And as they're getting their back blown out by that dude, they're taking the old simp's money and living a lavish lifestyle at his expense and getting a laugh behind his back. And that's sadly what happened to Hugh Hefner, who was the playboy, but what happened to the playboy is he wound up getting played in his old age, and he wound up getting played in his old age because he still thought he was the hot guy, but the whole thing is he cooled off many years ago, and after cooling off many years ago, he went from being the man about town to the man in a mansion, of the, uh, that is deteriorating and everything was declining around him and nobody had the courage to tell him that he had become an old simp because everybody around him was basically telling him what he wanted to hear only saying good things and as they only said good things they basically gassed this dude up until the day he died and he wound up dying in an ignominious fashion and as he died in an ignominious fashion, his legacy of Playboy basically shows what happens to players when they get old. Eventually, what happens to the player when he gets old and stays in the game is eventually he winds up getting targeted by female predators. And instead of him playing the women, he just gets played out. Now, if you want to pick up some of my books on the SJS Direct imprint, like the Isis series, the Steam series, the John Haynes series, the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, my Black Vampire novel, Eternal Night, or my Black Sorority novel, The Thetas, or my Black Business novel, Recipe for Success, you can find all of those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them at other online booksellers in digital format, such as Smashwords, the iBook Store, Google Play, Barnes & Noble, and you can also find them in paperback at Barnes & Noble, Walmart, and Target. And if you want to pick up my first full comic, John Haynes at Death's Door, you can find that comic on Lulu.com in paperback format, and you can get it for the same price as a paperback copy on the 2022 Kickstarter. And if you want to see me make more videos like this, you can send a donation to the Patreon, the PayPal, or the Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, The Temptation of John Haynes. Give in to temptation and pick up this action-packed African-American paranormal romance. Get The Temptation of John Haynes in paperback and e-readers today. 
Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, All About the Goddess. The Goddess Next Door bears all in the art studio to catch a campus stalker in this action-packed Isis series mystery. Get your copy of Isis, All About the Goddess in paperback and e-readers at online booksellers everywhere. Support Black-owned and Black-operated digital broadcast media, www.niceradionetwork.com. Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.